All right, haven't made a video. Oh my goodness, look at my hair. <laughs> anyway, uh, I haven't made a video for a while. I just caught a glimpse of myself. Uh, I guess I've been reading over here. But I figure it's time to make a video. I can't believe it's been, this, I don't know, it's been a few weeks since I loaded anything up. And it's not like that there's nothing going on. So, uh, first off, you guys need to call the Senate and get the, the audit the Fed thing passed. And they don't want to, <laughs> because their masters don't want you seeing what the dirty, nefarious, underhanded BS they've been doing for the last however long it's been. Oh, I don't know what, going on 98, 99 years now? Um, and certainly not in the last 10 years or 5 years or even 3 years or even 2 years. Because if you saw what's going on, you'd end the Fed. And that's step one, is audit the Fed and then end the Fed. Awaken the American people to this ridiculous scam Ponzi scheme where we have this private corporation printing our money for us and then loaning it to us at interest and then basically handing the money to whoever they want in the amount of trillions of dollars. So the audit the Fed bill, call your senators, call them, call them, call them, write them a letter, call them. Um, also, the hemp bill is uh, got introduced in the Senate, and that's a good thing to take a look at. And, and any of you silly Christians out there that think that hemp is illegal because God says it's bad, you're ridiculous. This country used to grow hemp. Other countries are growing hemp. The hemp industry in the United States of selling hemp products is increasing by leaps and bounds, but we can't grow it or make any of these products ourselves here in the United States. Just in Canada and China and other countries around the world uh, where they don't have ridiculous governments like ours that are owned by corporations that don't want uh, hemp being used to get into their uh, products, right? get in the way of their monopoly on oil and paper and fiber and I mean, just look at all the different things that hemp can be used for. Anyway, there's a uh, hemp bill before the Senate, and there's links down there. You, of course, there's tons of links. Uh, get information on that and um, inform your friends and get them to call their senators, too. Um, looks like we're going to win. And when I say we, I'm talking about the Ron Paul people. Uh, for all intents and purposes, these court battles about the delegates are coming down uh, on our side. Believe it or not, sometimes the the it's 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 most most of the time it's just us. But once in a while, justice is served. And when the law is very clear, and you back them into a corner and say, "Hey, look at this. This is the law. This is what the law says." Uh, sometimes the judges actually go, "Oh, yeah, that's what the law says." So I guess I have to rule in your favor. Then what the law says is that you can't coerce delegates to vote one way or the other. Free country, my friends. For a little while longer, it's a free country, and uh, you can't tell me how to vote. Um, we had the primaries here in Hawaii, so cute, the, uh, uh, voting machine in the precinct that I was in, one of the tally machines, the optical scanners was down, so there was a line, but don't worry, those votes all in that machine will all be counted, and don't worry, right, you get a paper ballot, and then you feed it into the machine, and it doesn't say your vote was counted, it says your vote was recorded, and then maybe they counted it, and I put, I'm going to put a couple more links down there, because there, there's a couple people that work for the elections that were like, don't, there's nothing wrong with those voting machines. <sighs> paper ballots, my friends. This is the biggest battle we're going to have to fight because we have these idiot Pollyannas out there that think that everything's up and up and it's safe and nobody would rig the election and nobody would rig the voting cards. Anyway, you'll see this one. It talks, It says Ron Paul um, vote fraud and stuff like that on it, but it's not. It's it's Ron Paul isn't mentioned on it at all. <laughs> Women are crying because they realize that the vote is rigged in the United States. Now, when we talk about vote rigging and election fraud, it's not so much... You know, people paying Mexicans or, you know, illegal immigrants to go down with no ID and vote twice or something and then move to another vote, pre presenting vote again. That's actually pretty rare in the United States. That's true. And the, and the mainstream media tries to confuse you with thinking that, oh, yeah, that kind of vote fraud is rare. But flipping the votes, very common, as the Ron Paul people found out firsthand. If you were paying attention, you see the votes flipped over and over again in election after election. Everywhere where they used voting machines, Ron Paul did poorly. Everywhere where they did uh, paper ballots, Ron Paul did pretty well. And sometimes he was a number one. Oh, gee whiz, and people still don't get it. It's amazing. That is the, the main thing. The main thing if, if when it comes to restoring the democracy or restoring this republic is not... Uh, <laughs> anyway, birth control or gay marriage. The number one thing is getting the paper ballots back. Darn it. 
Now, see, this is the thing. This whole chick fil uh, Notice how I stayed nice and quiet through all of that. That whole chicken sandwiches and gay marriage and this and that. More of this. More, hey, look at this. Hey, the Federal Reserve, they won't even talk about LIBOR, but they'll sure put stories about chicken restaurants on the news and, and you know, whatever pop star is doing whatever that. But, but you know, to tell you that you're getting ripped off by the bankers and that, you know, they, they can't find enough evidence to even prosecute Goldman Sachs for the fraud. And see, they'll just call it fraud. You know, it's crimes. It's criminal wrongdoing. And these guys need to go to jail. These guys need to get prosecuted, investigated, then prosecuted. And the wheels of justice need to turn in our criminal justice system that works actually pretty well sometimes if you actually allow it to work. But if you've got a president and a and a administration and a justice department and a attorney general that won't even investigate these fraudulent bastards who are ripping you off and going to make it so that you know, if your pensions get ripped off, your 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 counties and municipalities go bankrupt. Uh, you can't get a you can't get a decent rate of return on your money in any kind of uh, safe response uh, or, or any kind of safe uh, investment. You you uh, you'll find that these guys are 100% responsible for people going under, for bankruptcies, for people committing suicide, for people starving to death. They're 100% responsible for crashing the economy. And our president is like, they didn't do anything wrong. May have been immoral, but they didn't do anything wrong. And I'm not going to invest. And Goldman Sachs, by the way, is not working there, Barry, because Goldman Sachs, it turns out, is giving all their money <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> well, the employees, anyway, are giving their money to Romney and Ryan. Then notice how Romney picks his, he, does, he hasn't even won. He hasn't even, we haven't even, do we have a convention? You sons of bitch! Do we have a convention? We haven't had a convention yet, as I make this video, and and yet he's picking up, you know, the candidate, and basically he considers himself de facto winner, right? Okay, what you guys need to do also on this is let people know that there hasn't been a convention, and that all the delegates in the convention are free to vote their conscience, right? And then and then here's another thing: if you want to, you know, donate five or ten bucks because you know the money bombs are over, but if you want to donate five or ten bucks to the lawyers for Ron Paul, five or ten bucks to the lawyers for Ron Paul, that might be a good thing because legal fees actually are pretty expensive and these guys are doing it pro se. Um, also, the a lot of the other things that have, that were, the, the hanky-panky that they talked about, right, the shenanigans, as the mainstream media said, uh, has not been prosecuted or brought to court of law either and that's going to be costly. And uh, these uh, lawyers for Ron Paul are doing it for free and it actually costs money to get things notarized and, and file court documents and so forth. So if you wanted to help out the cause that way, you could still donate five or ten bucks. Probably the money, and that's why I say five or ten. Five or ten is nothing. Hundreds of dollars, don't be given hundreds. If you're going to, hundreds of dollars, you need to buy silver dimes. <laughs> buy silver coins. Because, my friends, this thing is going to crash. It's just a matter of time. It is, it is mathematically certain that we're going to have a serious disruption. Uh, Salente and a few other people talk about uh, depression worse. I mean, we're already in a pretty bad recession depression. Most of the, I mean, you know, a good portion of the country, probably 50%, is feeling the pain right now. But the other 50% is about to feel the pain. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And when uh, wealthy people, people that, you know, have a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year in, in income or salary, not income, there's a, let's, let's say, they get paid, let's put it that way, or they make, they earn a uh, hundred thousand or more a year. They're thinking they're all good, right? They're thinking everything is fine, and they're gonna wait. Well, I'll just wait, just wait, man. Everything is not fine. Wealthy Argentinians found out what happens when the economy goes bust. Same thing in uh, Yugoslavia and Bosnia and all these other places. Uh, there, I mean, like Africa, lots of countries find out what happens when the economy goes to heck. And we're going to find out what happens when it happens all at once on the planet, all at the same time. These are pretty exciting times to be living in because there is fiat currency in every country on the planet. There is no sound money anywhere. Watching the Eurozone, slow, this slow motion train wreck that is the Eurozone, uh, is fascinating because we look across the pond and we think it's not going to happen here. And I guarantee you it's coming to a city and country near you <laughs> soon. I assume that you're an American because I look at my, my stats and I see that mostly it's the United States that, that watches these videos, so you all 500 of you. Um, people are saying that I should ask you guys for a small donation to uh, get to Tampa 
because seriously, if everybody just gave me five bucks, I could easily go, right? That would be airfare and a place to stay and a car and all that kind of stuff. But instead, I, I'm not. Don't I, I, don't send me money. I don't want money. Um, instead, I've I've fomented a plot <laughs> where some these people are gonna uh, film their 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 adventure. They're gonna drive from California. Uh, in the Phoenix, I believe, or Arizona, and then drive all the way across the country in the Tampa and go to the convention, like four guys in a car. Well, actually, one woman and four guys in a car, maybe five guys in a car. <laughs> and uh, I was going to be part of this, but I can't, I can't do it. But uh, anyway, those should be YouTube videos that I will certainly link and comment on <laughs> if and when this actually does happen. Because this Tampa thing, uh, you guys ain't seen nothing yet. I'm telling you, the the whole, all you people that like are pretty much thrown in the towel and it's like, oh, it's going to be Obama or Romney. Uh, I've, I, you may have a surprise coming. I am not saying anything, but I'm not, I'm, oddly enough, I was raised in America, right? And I, the, the stories of the Alamo and all these stories in World War Two and World War One and the Civil War and all it right where the guys don't give up no matter what and they fight until the bitter end. That's the Americans I know, not the oh well round me one, <laughs> so we'll give up. Uh, the the thing hasn't happened yet. Now, is, does it look like Romney's gonna pull this thing out? Absolutely, it looks like he's gonna pull this thing out. Could Ron Paul still pull it out? Is it crazy to think that? I don't think it's crazy because we haven't had the damn vote yet. I mean, yeah. Anyway. Um, and who, who's this other, Gary Johnson? <sighs> All right, Gary Johnson, the libertarian guy, um, he might make a good vice president. I would rather see, uh, the judge Napolitano on, as vice president, but, uh, his stance on war is just like everybody else's stance on war. More war, better, right? Now all of a sudden the libertarians will have a reason not to show up for war protests because Gary Johnson says war is good and we need to go keep it up in Afghanistan and throw good money after bad and sacrifice more blood and treasure on the altar of war. When there's one guy and his name is Ron Paul talking about bringing the troops home and he's the one guy talking about prosecuting these bankers for their wrongdoing, which is why you hear nothing about Ron Paul except that he's unelectable. Because these bankers don't want anything like Ron Paul getting anywhere near the White House. And they wish that he, I mean, like they probably have done a pretty good job at making sure he doesn't campaign anymore because he was making a little too much noise. Then people were starting to wake up to the fact that both Obama and Romney, who are the same, the same and samer, uh, wouldn't, are, aren't going to do anything about prosecuting the bankers. And that's exactly the way they want it. This Ron Paul guy, on the other hand, he's crazy. He's talking about bringing troops home. He wants peace. He talks about the golden rule and the freaking Christians boo him. <laughs> this is the guy that they want to shut up at all costs. Make no mistake. Because if this guy were to get elected, it would be, uh, you know, it would be a completely different... You heard of this country called Iceland? You see what they did in Iceland? See, that's what Ron Paul wants to do. So they've done everything to say, oh, he's an isolationist. No, he wants peace and he wants to bring the troops home. Oh, he would cut your children's uh, head start. No, he's the guy trying to figure out how we're going to pay for head start and how we're going to pay for Medicare and Social Security and all these other things that we've been wasting, you know, just killing ourselves, you know, literally, in the Middle East, wasting billions and billions and then you know into the trillions of dollars uh fighting these wars you know where the pentagon can't even account for a couple of trillion dollars but anyway ron paul is a guy that's talking about look how we're going to pay for all this stuff well one of the ways we could pay for this stuff is bring the troops home troops come back to the united states uh they spend their money here at home he doesn't disband the military he, what he does is he brings the troops home our borders get patrolled the northern borders get patrolled uh the southern border particularly gets patrolled by our troops Okay, that which is you know a use for them. They they should posse contaminatus. No, they they shouldn't be you know patrolling Detroit and Miami. But on our borders, that's a completely different story. Um, and I'm not afraid of bringing the troops home. I've said this in other videos. The, these are our boys. These are your sons and daughters. And many of them uphold the Constitution. They're for Ron Paul. They try to keep so that they don't get their ballots. But bringing the troops home, that's that's a, you know that would be a good thing. And you know peace on earth and so forth. Um, because we are the main, when it comes to war, we supply everybody with the weapons, and we, we are the guys doing most of the shooting in most of the wars most of the time of late. And this needs to change. Ron Paul's the guy talking about changing that. The Federal Reserve, the money, all the money, this is the main thing. You can't get away from the fact that the way we fund this is with the Federal Reserve. And then, you know, legalizing marijuana and hemp and being able to have farmers grow hemp in the United States and getting rid of the TSA. Ron Paul is your only choice. 
But no, no, you guys are going to choose between the lesser of two evils instead. It's just sad. Really, it is. Um, don't give up the fight, though, because no matter what happens in Tampa, this liberty movement and the restoring, the restoring the Constitution and restoring the public does, republic does not end at Tampa. We got work to do. Uh, get out there and get after it. Maintain <laughs> the positive attitude and go to work. All right, Ron Paul, 2012.